Show sure, ready? Okay, good afternoon everyone. I'm Wenas from, actually I'm, I, I came from Indonesia, but I work in Singapore. And today I'm going to present about course to CPE with Microtech devices. And I will, I, will, I will be telling you all the devices and how are we going to work out with the system. All right, so I came from Prima Bananan Private Limited, which is uh, my, my company and I'm part of the co-owner. My past experience is actually deploying citywide wireless mesh network, uh, custom licensed wireless networks, XISP management, which is like uh, the normal ISP and those are wireless ISP management and wireless roaming. Yeah, and today I'm going to talk about like, uh, sorry, current broadband, current broadband stretch, stats, current players, when is uh, the milestone and about this project, this is, is this is a case study and the team, the challenges, the topology, the devices, operation, and about the affordability and the target market. All right, where is Sukabumi? This is the place where I actually deployed the system. Uh, it, it is located in Indonesia. It is uh, south of uh, Malaysia and Singapore. And uh, Sukabumi itself stays in West Java which is uh, the largest regency in West Java. It's like a province, a smaller province as in a state, which is one of the largest. And it is the second largest in the whole island. And currently there's two and a half million people living there, 47 sub-districts, 386 villages, 4,161 kilometers square, which is what we are going to cover. And sea, sea level to the peak, is about 3,100 meter. All right, so who's, who is the current players there? They are fixed, wild, wired, and wireless ISP, which is about eight, eight to nine ISP right now. Some of them is joining in, some of them is like leaving Sukabumi, and there are two incumbents in that particular city, which is Takom Indonesia and Bisnet. Okay, and they are actually mobile broadband operators, Five of them, and all of them are major operators, and there's no virtual network operators there. And 4G coverage is really bad. You can see from here, the 4G coverage is only about 10% of the whole regency, which we have to actually cover this side. And okay, right now, what we have done is actually we have already built our infrastructure, which is towards the western side of the Sukabumi. And next, uh, around this month, we are going to actually deploy broadband towards the rural area, which is this part. It's towards the, around the seaside. So after that, around quarter three, we are going to penetrate towards the west and the side, side beach area. And after that, we are going to continue towards passing the mountain which is quite quite hard to do this. And after that, on a Q1 next year, we're going to continue and build it towards the uh, the southern side, which we use, uh, we are going to use the this connection from the rural area towards the southern side. And by quarter two, we are going to actually cover around this area, which is about 50% the coverage of the whole entire agency. Okay, next we are going to talk about our milestone. This project is actually started uh, last year, late last year, in quarter three. We are going to, uh, down there we actually discuss about how the project is going to work, the planning, and most of them is actually, we have to find the investor in, in the first place. So on the quarter four, we're actually targeting small investor because, you know, Microtech is very low cost and it's really affordable, so we don't need to have like big investor, and uh, most of them are going to actually able to support our our cost of the project. And uh, supporting infrastructure is actually paid by the end user right now, and uh, it is actually helping us quite quite a big amount of money. And uh, last year, late last year, our average traffic is already about 50 megabit. And earlier this year, 
We are talking about uh, the stage one of the infrastructure building, which is like just now, as I told you earlier, we are building towards the rural west Kabumi, so towards the west side of it. And currently the average traffic is about 120 megabit. And just about two weeks ago, our, we already reached about 150 megabit. And we already developed about another, another two more micro POP, which I'm going to describe later on in the slide. All right, the team is actually comprises about uh, comprising RTRW Net, which is it's a district-wide uh, network provider, which is actually illegal down there. And uh, we actually getting fiber, fiber connection from the metro Ethernet providers. And we are actually using two upstream providers, which is right now is still non-disclosure. And we got some local government support, local manufacturer of towers and masks, and a few mi micro architects. Okay, so what are our challenges in the first place? It's mostly about the money. So why the money? Because currently this is actually a municipal broadband, so it's mostly only to cover that much particular area. We are not going to expand outside that area. So and uh, another issue is actually geographical limitation. There are a lot of mountains, ridges, and there are a lot of blank spots right now, even on uh, 2G networks, which is uh, running a sub gigahertz network and is super super propagate easier and the bandwidth pricing is is super expensive and there's another issue is that there, there is a need of a uh, broadband speed while they actually unable to actually afford that broadband speed in the first place right now and the best one is actually electricity all right so geographical limits this area is actually full of ridges and mountains. This area and this area is uh, mostly mountains. So uh, we can actually build uh, POPs here and here, but the issue is the accessibility. So if there's a POP here, it is very difficult for us to actually maintain it. Without maintenance, our network will not going to work properly. And all right, next is bandwidth price is absurd. It's actually on 100 Mbps, we have to pay about 7,000 USD a month. We are talking about uh, dedicated speed, not broadband speed. And uh, it is before negotiation. After that, it's, uh, it's, it's not even less than that. It's not even much lesser than 15% cheaper. All right. And we are talking about the population density. So around the west area of Sukabumi, it is actually not much people living there, and it's only Basically, mostly only schools and uh, tourist area is around the beach side, but towards the southern part, there's no one actually living there. It's mostly jungles, plantations, and mangrove areas actually. And towards the southern part, there's actually some tourist area which actually, uh, which is uh, our target market. And there's some part which is the mountain part. It's impossible for us to reach there. And about electricity. The SLA, service level agreement to the electric company, is zero, nothing. So we are talking about within 24 hours, we have electricity cuts about maybe three hours to four hours. So it is impossible for us to actually get a proper electricity working there. So the coverage, most of the mantles is there's no coverage you know, with electricity. So is there any solution to that? Yes, there is. We can use a solar panel and a DC to DC inverter. Because the solar panel itself actually producing about 24 volts, whereby uh, some of our magnetic equipment is running 48 volts and uh, slightly higher, about 28 volts. All right, so this is our current topology. And the red one is planned, the green one is already connected. So we're actually building a mesh network with, uh, within POPs, and we push MPLS inside this uh, particular connection. So if when there's one node down, we can actually still serve other, other connections to the another nodes. Okay, so this is actually the topology, how we actually deliver the internet towards the end user. And I'm going to explain this in detail after this slide. All right, this is the topology core, which is, this is the core of our system. We are using two RB1100 AH times two, which is one is, uh, this thing is one of the best router for BGP right now, which is cheap, 
and it has been working for years. So that this is the best one I can say. For failover, we are using OSPF between these two particular routers. And uh, on the call itself, we have to provide redundancy. Without redundancy, our network is not going to run well also. And all right, it is going to work well with two BGP full feed. And there are actually another two more for the local exchange. And there's no issue to it. It's going to run within uh, lesser than 50% of the CPU. All right, this is our distribution. So how are we going to distribute it? So we send those two router, we connect it through fiber towards uh, this particular CCR 1009. This CCR is actually providing MPLS and OSPF. This is partly of the CE network, uh, sorry, the PE networks. And uh, for the firewall and the triple PoE and radius, we actually separate it. It is actually going to connect to the CCR 1009. So this thing become our some kind like an, an aggregation router. So, because we, sorry, we need uh, slightly more ports for the CCR, we actually connect it to a 10G switch, which is CCRS226. And this CRS226 is actually providing to those uh, fiber customers and those active Ethernet customers. And uh, as a common MPLS PE, which is our CPE for the fiber networks, we are actually using RB960 PGS which is uh, one of the newest one. Uh, it is a uh, hex PoE, we call that. It supports uh, gigabit and gigabit fiber options. And for the fiber uplink POP, we are using CRS212. So we can actually use this CRS212 and we connect it to the CRS226 uh, with uh, 10G networks. And then we are going, we are able to distribute active ethernet uh, easily. And it, it is affordable. All right, uh, continuing from it, from it, uh, we are actually using hex PoE for our so-called uh, mini pop. So it's a slightly bigger than micro pop, and it's, uh, this hex PoE actually power up as a PoE injector to this three man box, which is uh, RB921, and it's going to cover 360 with uh, 360 degree coverage with just three of it. And for the PTP links, we are we like to use uh, QRT5 or Dynadish. Dynadish is one of the affordable solution for more than 10 kilometer wireless networks. All right, for the fiber options. Uh, fiber uplink POP provides exceptional capacity, which is on a single base station, single POP, we can provide up to like about 100 users with at least 300 to 400 megabit of speed of the throughput. And it is a good place for long distance point-to-point -point repeater, which is uh, there's some part of the regions we have to circumvent, we have to go around it. We're actually using this particular uh, fiber link uh, capacity. And we can actually use a point-to-point -point repeater with a metal 52 AC and a 30 dB solid dish. And it, we can go 25 or even 35 and 40 kilometers, and we still can get about uh, 30 to 40 TCP throughput. And it's, uh, both of it is duplex, which is, you know, you can just receive and transmit uh, together, and we still can get about 30 Mbps. All right, and this is our wireless uplink uh, POP. It is uh, actually connected with uh, Dynadish towards our fiber uplink POP. And uh, from that Dynadish, we can connect it to the hex PoE and this hex PoE again will, trans uh, will, will become a PoE injector towards our, our man box system. And this, this whole thing will cost less than 1,500 USD, including the backbone and uh, there is another one which is like become a repeater. And uh, this we call it as the mini pop. The mini pop will cover about 7 to 10 kilometer radius. And uh, the CP itself we are actually using LHG5 which is one of the low cost CPE and it can actually achieve at least 50 Mbps for the network. Then as a bottom CPE as in at the end user CPE itself is actually the HAP series. We can use the cheapest HAP light all the way until uh, HAP AC. All right, and there's another thing, we call it the micropop. Micropop is a new concept about deployment of fixed broadband 
service of a wireless. This is uh, meant for dense neighborhoods. Remember, there's uh, some part of it is uh, which is uh, the tourist areas and uh, beaches and resorts and everything. We actually using MicroPop to deliver our network. So this is uh, relatively cheaper than Mini Pop, Mini POP, which is uh, costing about 1,000 to 1,500 USD each POP, and this is very cheap. At least about maybe only about 300, 400. USD, including including the, the tower itself, and uh, the CP. But the, the problem is the CP. The CP will cost you slightly higher because of the AC system, which is slightly more expensive than uh, LG5. Oh. All right. So what have we used just now? We actually using uh, the core, which is the RB1100. It has a legendary uptime. I have some system that it has been running for like more than 500 days and it's still working well. There's a bypass port, which is the port uh, 11 and 12, whereby if one of the devices actually dead and there's no electricity passing in, it will actually directly bypass it to the second port, which is the ATO 12. And the problem about uh, RB1100 is, uh, no, uh, the good thing about it is there's no fast architecture, which is it has been working well, it has matured, so less likely to have bug. Then for the distribution side, the wired, we are actually using CCR 1009. It is nine cores with 1.2 gigahertz uh, processor speed. It is great for triple PoE BRAS, which is like an, I said earlier, is an aggregation router. It is MPLS 3D and uh, for simple queue performance, let's say you want to save costs, uh, not not to install uh, separate queuing system or separate uh, QS system, we can actually just use this CCR1009 to become a QS system. And the best thing, it, it is already supporting 10G. So for the next generation, we can just reuse this for, we are talking about XG pawn and next generation pawn. Then for the switch itself, we are using CRS226, which is, it, it will switch at line rate, including 10G line rate. It has uh, two times of the 10G SFE plus port, which we can actually do it using it for, we can use it for DC chaining. DC chaining means like, it becomes like a stackable router, it's similar to that. And uh, more and more documentation available right now on a CRS system, which is, Last time, uh, about last year, is still quite limited on the tutorials and all those. And for 10G switch, as in 10G capable switch, this is one of the cheaper than major brands. I cannot say other brands, but major brands. <laughs> all right, and for the fabric extender, we can just use uh, CRS212, which is cheaper than 226, and it is already supporting 10G, 10G, 10 gigabit. It is great for optical ethernet or active ethernet CPE and subscribers. And uh, for the CP itself, we are actually using Hex PoE or PowerBox Pro. PowerBox Pro, already, it is actually Hex PoE in an outdoor situation. So we can actually just install one PowerBox Pro in one of the, uh, one of the pole or mass, and we can just use the Ethernet itself to power at least four CPE. And uh, it, is, uh, it is one of the most affordable gigabit PoE injector because uh, as you can see down here, is, uh, is it costs less than 80 US dollar, and uh, it is able to support and it includes uh, it includes actually switch device here, and yes, you can push uh, 802.3 AD if I'm not wrong, 80, yeah, 80, uh, sorry, 802.3 AF, and uh, yeah, it supports 48 volt actually, and the best thing it supports fiber optic connections. All right, for the wireless distribution system, how we use it? We are actually using it for Dynadish, as in for, for a CPE or point-to-point -point links. We use Dynadish for point-to-point -point links and it is analysis spectrum, so you can just use uh, any of the five gigahertz channels and uh, it is 25 dB gain, so you don't have to buy external antenna. And it is actually quite compact compa compared to like a dish and a grid antennas. It has uh, it provides high throughput and is it is it itself is actually 802 and 11 AC ready. And we also have a Manbox series, 
which is uh, it, there, there's two two antenna available right now, which is 15 and 19 dB gain. It is a 120 degree sectoral antenna. Uh, three of it will create a great 360 coverage of the of the networks. It provides big RAM, which is about 128 right now. More devices can connect uh, compared to like a smaller one, which is like 411, which is the older system. Uh, and it itself also have a SFP fiber, so we can actually just connect the CIS212 directly to this particular MAN box for SFP speed, as in SFP distance. The uplink, and it is possible to use GPON ONU, which is available in SFP form factor. And we have Metal 52EC. This is meant for longer distance. We can use 30, 34, or even greater gain antenna. It is one of the best RS sensitivity right now in the in the market. It is it, it has a rugged build quality, which is made by metal, made with metal. So it's not a plastic device, not not like the other Rattobots. And it has common N-type connectors, so you can use any antennas, almost any antennas that you want. And after all, this is gigabit device, so you can actually push more than 100 megabit through wireless with this system. All right, then next, the MicroTIC device used for micro POP. We're actually using OmniTIC AC PoE. This thing is uh, also 802.11 AC ready. It oblings two or more backbone PTP on the using the PoE injector system. It has a mid span, uh, as in it has a PoE out, and we can actually use mid span injector for best result because uh, there's a there's a limit per port for if we are using it as a PoE uh, through PoE in, but using the uh, current DC connector is, is is going to work well for mid span actually, yeah. CP wireless itself, uh, we are using SXT. It costs less than 60 and less than 70 USD. Uh, currently, we are using this light to replace current SXT models because it is cheaper than SXT, as in SXT AC, but it provides a better and greater gain. So with this, we can actually lower down the EIRP while maintaining better CCQ. Then for LHG5, this is one of the lightweight dish, and it is less than 100 USD. And for the more expensive, but currently one of the best radio is actually QRT5 AC. It is good for up to 10 kilometers, and we can actually push about 200 to 250 megabit of speed using this particular device. And there's a new one, LDF5. We are currently trialing this on a 30 kilometer link and we're still able to achieve about 80 megabit. And the problem is, uh, and the good thing is we can use KU band offset dish, which is very cheap. We can get it for like 10, $20. And uh, you can just make a 30 kilometer links with less than $100. For the dish, grid panel, and plus metal 52 AC, the device just now that I showed you earlier, we can actually get up to 15 kilometer or even greater. For the wired CPE, we are actually using uh, HAP EC light, which I actually I bring it right now, and the MicroTIC also the display one of the unit there. Eh? And because it has dual band, we can actually use one of the radio to connect to the POP, and the another one to connect to the for the CPE, as in to the end user. All right. So how actually we are going to run this particular municipal broadband provider? First, day-to-day -day operation. It is actually very simple. There's no problem with it. So we use actually, uh, we use billing, CRM, monitoring and provisioning system. And most of it is actually, uh, is readily available in the market. So you can just pay for the subscription fee or you can just pay for a one-off fee. But uh, there's two issues with it. Uh, there's one which is cloud-based and there's another one is dedicated. It is basically just hosted first versus uh, physical uh, system, but uh, currently for this small system, we are using cloud system, which is cheaper. All right, for the cost recovery scheme of our our all uh, as in our networks, we actually have a sharing economy mindset. 
whereby we can actually provision virtual SSID for free hotspot and paid hotspot. We can actually just use uh, SNS, which is Social Network Service Login. And uh, we actually wanted to partner with uh, Give Me Online, which is uh, just now it is already shown by Mr. Faisal Reza earlier. Uh, we can also use it as an adver advertisement as a service. So those people that connect to our hotspot will be will have uh, advertisement in, in, in their so-called, in their captive portal. And we also support uh, Wi-Fi roaming, like edu, edu room and iPass. We actually get, uh, we, we can get some money from them for every single access that, uh, that the system has, as in the, the user access. And there's another one, which is virtual network operator. So there's uh, this particular new concept in Indonesia that uh, we can actually just joint venture with another ISP with, uh, so they can use our backbone and they can use our infrastructure. And uh, it's going to actually save them with costs. And uh, saving costs means greater profit for this case, okay. And this is uh, one example of our system, which is uh, we use a five, uh, four virtual SSID with one particular management SSID. So we connect each SSSD with VLAN. We can see this one is a 1911. This is 1101, which is towards the CPE, which provide a triple BOE network. And uh, there's another one, Captive Portal, which connects to like uh, SNS login and all those in, on uh, another VLAN. And for VNO, virtual network operator, we actually sharing with another uh, hotspot system and a hotspot uh, ISP, and it's on running on another VLAN. All of this VLAN is actually running in a single MPLS network, which is going to save us a lot of time in provisioning. And uh, the good thing about this is all within the MPLS, the MPLS network is going to provide failover and a uh, mesh network. All right, currently we have uh, a few staffs only, which is uh, we only have two shifts of two people on our NOC. We have uh, one billing people and another one is one marketing people. Uh, with basically with less than 10 people, we can run this particular ISP. And with small team, it is easy to coordinate, uh, coordinate the work. And one more thing, we have our system, which is the monitoring system. We use uh, Microtik the Dude, which is, uh, it is free from Microtik and recently updated. You can visit uh, wikimicrotik.com to learn more about the Dude. All right, I think, that's why. why. Why? Why are we going to run this municipal broadband? So this is our target user in the first place. We are, we are targeting public service officers and branches, police department, fire department, like other departments, hospital and clinics, district officers, uh, NGO and NPO, which is non-governmental of official uh, as in organization, and NPO, non-profit organization. And uh, our, actually our best target is actually currently out of reach populated area, which is like the, just now like, the, even in jungles and plantation, there are people that actually needs broadband, broadband suites. And affordability. Based on recent statistic, most common internet packages bought around the region is about 30 USD each month. It includes a uh, 10 megabit uh, download speed and a uh, two megabit uh, upload speed. With, uh, they also support uh, provides IPTV with free to air channels. But what we can offer, how, how are we going to compete with them? We can provide the same amount, uh, with the same amount of money with internet of 25 megabits uh, download speed and uh, five megabits upload speed. With the price, same, 30 USD. But the problem is right now is the CPE is still paid by the customer itself. So we are not going to provide CPE for free unless they, they have uh, like uh, some, some kind of contracts with us. And we are not the cheapest actually right now, but uh, currently our SLA is still the highest in the city. So this is the SWOT, which is the strength, weakness, opportunities, and threats about uh, this particular microtech based infrastructure. The strength, it is actually low cost. It is reasonable, it has reasonable performance. Uh, and we have strong community in Indonesia. So basically if we have, we need something to like, uh, there's a problem in our system, we can just contact the community and someone will actually just answer it. And after that, the weakness about uh, Microtik, it, it has uh, one of the steep, steepest learning curve because it is uh, not like other major brands, 
So we have to actually basically being trained to so-called install and uh, maintain this particular micro T system. And it is actually not yet next generation broadband ready because the uh, micro -tick themselves, they don't provide OLTs and uh, ONUs, but no, they, they have ONUs, but they don't have the OLTs. And uh, it is not maintenance free. Uh, sometimes there are some micro -tick devices which has uh, a bit uh, buggy, so we have to like restart it uh, regularly or some some of it is just like it crashed by itself but uh, uh, <coughs> uh, during this past year it has been lesser and lesser so it, somehow the quality gets better all right for the opportunities itself it is a sharing economy system so everyone can just join the bandwagon and help us to create uh, bigger networks and uh, we have uh, plenty of area to be penetrated which is uh, mostly rural areas that the incumbents doesn't want to provide links there, and uh, we are actually making a market break too. And the threats, the threats, what, who are the threats to our system, as in to our so-called uh, infrastructure, which is the, the incubus. Once the incubus saw the opportunity in our system, they can just actually provide their own link, their own system, and uh, they can just sell it much cheaper than us. And uh, for the speed and for the speed, we, we cannot provide more than 100 Mbps, am I right? For to, towards a wireless customer through a micro system. It is not feasible, I can say. And fiber Gpon. Fiber Gpon, it has been running with the incumbents. So we are not targeting the urban area. We are more towards the rural area. And the economic of scale. Since that this is a municipal broadband, we are not going to scale much larger than that. So we are not going to go to another city or even go towards uh, another harder to reach area. All right, I think that's all for my presentation today. Uh, you have any question with our system? Any questions? There's no question? Questions? All right, then I will end it here. Thank you.